Hi everybody, Chris Lodi here again. Uh, one of the things I touched on in a recent video was the potential for expanding the Vulcan modular and other pin header style modular systems using a prototype bedboard like this one. It's a solderless way that you can expand the uh, functions and potential of uh, devices like this. So I'll just be going over a few different components that you can use and uh, showing you how to set it all up. So you're going to need a prototype breadboard like this. Uh, there's loads of different sizes available. This is quite a common smaller size. You'll need some longer um, header pin cables like this. Either that or you can just get some solid core wire and strim the ends and use that. That's also quite a good way of doing it. And you'll need some components as well, which I'll talk about as we go through. Uh, things like uh, potentiometers and uh, little sockets for running our um, uh, mini jack cables in and out touch pads, uh, switches, there's one. And uh, if we want to see what's going on uh, inside the connections, we can use LEDs like this. So yeah, let's have a look. So before we start, I'll be looking at passive components in this uh, tutorial mostly, apart from the LED, which draws a little bit of current. Uh, but there's still the potential that you might damage your equipment by doing this. Uh, so if you're not comfortable with that, please don't follow this tutorial. I will not take responsibility for you destroying your stuff. Um, I may in the future look at active circuits that we can add to the, uh, these devices, such as things like uh, inverters and filters and that kind of thing, uh, which would involve adding power. But in this case, we're not adding any power. We're just drawing current from the device and modifying the signals externally. Um, I will put some links in the description of where I bought these components from. Obviously, I'm in the UK, so my wholesaler is in the UK. Uh, there's lots of other places around the world where you can get these bits. Um, so let's start by just talking about the breadboard a little bit. So here we've got a grid of little pinholes that each of these will accept a wire being pushed into them. These ones here run this way. So you've got five uh, holes that all connect together this way, like this. And then across this section, these rails run this way. Apart from this time, this is connected all the way along the top like this. So you, these are usually used for power and ground connections, which is why they've got plus and minus on them. And you've got the same up here. These ones run this way and these ones run this way. So with that in mind, a uh, nice easy thing to demonstrate is a switch. Um, so let's just, got a, we've got a basic patch set up here in the Vulcan module. It's just gonna beep. So these are turned all the way down. If we were to take, for example, the plus output from the envelope here, or the function generator, I should call it, and run it back into the uh, release, that is gonna lengthen this uh, envelope. And you're thinking maybe, what's the point in doing that? You could just turn the knob up. Well, what we can do is we can run our plus uh, connection out of the Vulcan modular through a switch and back in again, and we can make a little sustain pedal. So let's do that. We'll put one of these into one of those connections there. And we need to put our switch in. So uh, whichever whichever uh, numbered connection we add our switches to is going to be the number of connections that we're going to run our wires from. So 17 and 14, I think it'll be in this case, but it can be anywhere along here that you like. Uh, so don't get a bit carried away, actually. This is our switch. It's a tiny little thing with two pins in the bottom and it's got a little push button on top. So there we go, I think we're actually in 17, 17 and 15, I think are our pins actually. So we just get a short tone. If we connect this into the release side of the function generator and then into this pin, short tone, long tone. So we've essentially made a little sustain pedal for ourselves. So that's really useful for doing all sorts of things. You can make and break connections without having to constantly pull pins and put them back in again. So over on the Basel Castle, for example, if we were to set up a little patch, let's just switch this on. So that's our main oscillator pitch. If we run the stepped output into the pitch in, for example, it's gonna generate random voltages. But um, one of the features of the Basel Castle, if we connect a positive connection to our bit in, it's going to randomize the pattern that it generates. So let's do that with our switch. So from plus here to bit in. That's that pattern. So 
So every time we press the button, we're going to get a different pattern, and that's a way to um, use the bit in on the Battle Castle without having to constantly pull cables in and out. So let's take a look at another type of switch. This one we've just used is a momentary switch, so it'll only stay on while we're holding the button down, whereas this one is a latching switch, and it's got three pins on the bottom. Uh, so the middle pin is basically our output, and the other two are going to be our inputs. So if we get that on the board, Now, for example, if we wanted to um, send two different signals and switch between them uh, to one of our inputs on the vocal modular, we could take the output of an oscillator, for example, and send it to the output, and we're going to get a beep immediately. If we take that connection here, the left-hand side of the output section on the vocal modular, and select our center pin on our switch, we can then route a, an audio signal into it. So if on this side, That'll be on. Let me flick our switch over, that's going to be off. But if then also, if we run a different audio signal into the other side of the switch, for example, we're going to get our, our other audio oscillator. And we can switch between them. Uh, so this is something you can do for all sorts of different control signals as well as audio. Uh, remember that on these uh, units, audio and control signals are interchangeable. If we were to do the same thing and then swap that out for a potentiometer, which is one of these, uh, they normally look like this. Actually, I've put a knob on just so that you can see more easily what's going on. This is a B10K. B tells you the response shape of the, the sweep of the, the control. That's B is basically linear. I've gone for 10K, it seems to be about right. Different values will affect the responsiveness of it slightly. This has also got three pins, and again, the center one is the output of the wiper that moves around, and the uh, left and right pins are gonna be uh, inputs. So if we put that here on the end of our board, they need quite a firm shove to get them in these, but they do fit. Um, and then connect our uh, output section to the middle pin of the potentiometer. and then our out, the audio uh, from our oscillators to the other two pins. We can sweep between them. So using that setup, you can create what's called a crossfader, so you crossfade between two signals. So let's just demo that on the Basel Castle as well. I'll come up with a quick patch. If we connect the... Um, LFO output, for example, to the pitch. It's always hear, easy to hear things going on the pitch domain. And um, then turn the knob up. We get that kind of shape. If we go off the square version of the LFO, we get that. So if we take our middle connection um, here and go into the pitch input, for example, and then these two into the square and uh, triangle versions of the LFO. There we've got square. And there we've got triangle. So we can very easily decide a, a mix of those two if we want. So a really useful thing to be able to do with the breadboard is to actually be able to visualize the signals that are coming out of these devices. What we're going to use to do that is an LED. So here's that, and you'll see that one of the legs is just a tiny little bit shorter than the other one. That tells us that's our negative connection. So I'll put it in the board. Now it's kind of difficult to describe uh, what negative or ground means in electronics terms, so we're going to avoid that completely. Just think of it as like a reference. So uh, ground or negative is zero, and all other voltage is going to be above or below that. Uh, so in this case, um, when we connect another connection to the other side of the LED, it's going to show us the difference. So the brightness of the LED is come kind of like comparing the voltage difference between zero and whatever we feed it with. It's very easy to get a ground connection off the Basel Castle because it has a minus connection, which is there. So we're going to connect that to the left-hand side of our LED. And then if we 
uh, make a connection somewhere else, like for example the output of the LFO, I better turn this on. Uh, the triangle side, and if we connect that to the other side of the LED, we're going to see that light up at the same speed as the LFO rate. There is a slight difference between the shape here of these two LEDs. That's because there's a what's called a forward voltage, um, which is the minimum voltage you need to power an LED. It depends on the colour. In this case, that's 1.7 volts. There's a point up to which the LED won't light, and then it will. So we're getting a little bit of a, a dead spot. If we connect it to the square, we can see the square flashing away there. There is actually a little bit of dirt on the square LFO on this. And then we, as we turn it up, we can see it flashes quicker and quicker. We can actually also put it into the audio output and then we can see the audio waveform until it gets so fast that we can't see it flashing. Um, so it's, yeah, it's really useful on the Core Vocal 2, but we need to make our own ground connection here. It doesn't actually have a minus or a ground out, but it is available on these sockets and potentially, I think, on these screws if you were to attach a wire to one. But that's just that's just daft. <laughs> so let's go with these little tiny 3.5 mm sockets. So these are our like mini jack sockets. As you see, there's a center pin. That's where ground is going to come from, and our connections are also going to be made on these outer two pins. Uh, the other ones are for switching connections as we pull the plug in and out. We don't really need those. So if we manage to get that in the board here on the outer side, and then we need to connect one of our mini jack cables from one of the sockets. CV is quite a useful one because we can then copy this later with another socket um, like that. And our middle connection from our socket goes to the negative of the LED. And then from the bulk modular, we can monitor all sorts of signals. So we can connect another wire here. If we go into the envelope or function generator rather, we're gonna see that it lights up. And if we turn up our uh, release time, that'll be reflected in the brightness of the LED. If we connect to our um, gate out here on the function generator, we're gonna see this is actually inverted. And then we can connect to the different clock outputs on the on the sequencer too. So it's useful for looking at all sorts of things. If you're not quite sure what's coming out of a socket, you can make it light up and check. Now that we have ground connected to our board, we can do even more. We can now use our potentiometer as an attenuator. An attenuator is used to turn down control signals um, the Vulcan module is a little bit lacking in that area. The Vassal Castle isn't, so we've got three attenuators down here for the three um, knobs on this side. So we're, we're quite well sorted in that respect. So let's say we wanted to control the fold with the function generator. So we take our plus output and run it into fold. And when we play, it's already quite a lot of modulation going on there. And we can't turn this down because this is already at zero. Um, so what we could do is we could run it through the utility module, which is an attenuverter, I think they're called. There's quite a menial task for this thing, because this can do quite a bit, uh, and there's only one of them. So let's do it with our board instead. So we've got ground here, so we need to run ground. Um, if we're going to connect it up in the conventional way, we take ground from this middle socket and put it into the left hand side, so that when we're fully anti-clockwise, uh, we're at zero. So we need to feed the other side of the uh, potentiometer with our plus signal from our function generator. And then our center uh, connection is going to be the output. So let's just run that into our fold connection. So at the moment it's turned down. And as we turn it up, effect. So another use of the same setup is we can use it to control the volume um, of certain things. So we've still got ground connected here and to our knob, we're turned all the way down. If we take um, 
this input to the output section of the Volker modular and connect that to the center pin. And then the output of one of our low pass gates here into the right hand connection, we can control the volume of this. Because if we do that with the cutoffs here, we completely change the tone and the length of time that notes will take to play. Like that. So we can add more than one potentiometer to the board, or we can use those uh, in multiple ways to control volumes and uh, signal levels. So one last tip is these little um, sort of touchpad strips that you can find. Um, I've already put this on the board because it's a bit of a pain to get in actually. I've struggled to get the pins to slide in, but um, trust me, it's worth it. So these also have three pins, very similar to the potentiometer because that's basically what they are. They're a potentiometer based on where you touch the strip. Apart from they will also disconnect the signal completely when you let go. So they're a kind of combination potentiometer switch um, in effect. So if we take a ground and go into the left side, our um, let's take our positive connection and go into the right side and then our output from the middle and then let's run that into ratio so now when we play So it's got a little, a little bit of potential there for kind of a pressure-based response. <laughs> so all sorts of weird, creepy things you can do with that. Uh, so yeah, thanks very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching all these weird little nerdy hacks that I've come up with. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and check out all the links and things that I've got there. That's why I put them in, so you can look. Okay, thanks very much and I'll catch you in the next one.